Welcome to Cairo Author Insights. I'm with Dr. Amir Rashidi and I'm really excited to have um, Dr. Rashidi because we've been in a mastermind to group together. We actually sat down at Napa some time ago and had a conversation and honestly at that point in time I was not so clear about the amazing impact that this incredible man is happening and so humble, very unassuming, but the reach and impact is incredible. Not only is he an amazing chiropractor at Mid-Atlantic Chiropractic Centre, he wrote a book, Distress Proof Life, and we're going to talk about that today. And I don't want you to just think in the context of chiropractic, writing a book when we talk about Dr. Amir. Incredible speaker. He's featured on so many podcasts. His video blog, Health Minutes, is sharing an incredible health chiropractic and, and lifestyle message. An amazing man, incredible chiropractor, Dr. Ashidian. Welcome. Hey, Dr. Marcus, thank you so much. What an awesome, awesome, kind introduction. I am so honored to be here. I'm looking forward to talking to you and, and your great audience. This is going to be great. That's great to have you. Listen, I want to talk to you particularly today. I mean, there's so much that you do, but I do want to talk about the stress group life. And so tell us a little bit about that book and you know, how it came about particularly and what it is you know, meaning for you in your practice. You know, from, from a chiropractic philosophy standpoint, you know, we, we stand on that premise, the human body can withstand things. Not only that, it can adapt and grow into situations. That's why we exercise. And that's why we believe in removing that interference so the body can grow and, and respond to the environment properly. I, I was thinking about, uh, you know, patients who love to complain about stress being the source of their illness. Doc, I'm so stressed out. If I didn't have stress, I probably wouldn't have any pain. I probably wouldn't have any problems. I probably wouldn't be sick. It's all stress. And, and really, you know, if we can get them to say, no, it's all me, then, then a lot would change. You know, I, I'll say, hey, you know, we just went through this whole uh, pandemic and there was stress, right? And they said, you need to stay home. Don't come outside. When I was a kid, I lived in Iran. The government said everyone needs to stay home because if you come out, we'll shoot you. So, so you, you know, to, to me, this wasn't too stressful. You know, I'm going, that was stressful. I was a little kid and we would hear gunfire outside our home and, and it, there would be POWs escaping and, and, and shooting and we'd hide behind, you know, walls. So bullets would come into our window. Uh, I remember uh, being, you know, seven years old and, and my mother said, hey, turn on your radio before you go to sleep tonight because um, if there's an air raid, they're going to wake us up and we have to go to the basement and hide. And a little after midnight, you know, that siren went off and we all ran to the basement. Everybody from the building was hiding there and waiting. We heard the roar of this jet plane overhead and the whistle of this bomb that had just been dropped. And that whistle is just getting louder and louder as the bomb is getting closer and closer. And you have no idea because it's too high pitched. You can't tell where it is. So it could be right over your head or it could be a block away and just wait for the explosion. And, and, and so, you know, the walls shake and the lights flicker and you, you realize, oh, I'm still alive, but a bomb just fell and someone just died. I mean, that is stressful. So, so stress is so relative. If we, if we say, oh, stress is the reason we're sick, well then how do you explain, you know, the, the people who do 10 times the amount of work that someone else does and they're just fine. We're all humans, right? Your, your level of health, how healthy you are, is entirely dependent on how much stress you can handle. And your level of success depends on how much stress you can handle. I have nine employees. You know, it's nothing compared to the guy who has 250 employees. That's nothing to the guy who has 100,000 employees. How many does Richard Branson have? You know, so, so it's, it's my stress tolerance that keeps me at the level I am at. So instead of saying, hey, let me reduce my stress, you know, I can reduce my stress by selling my practice, giving away my children, and living in somebody's basement, paying $100 a month rent, and living off of noodles for, for food, you know, reduce, right? That's low stress. Who wants that? You know, but your family, your, your career are going to be sources of stress. You want them to grow. You want to be better. You can't be trying to reduce stress. You just got to grow stronger so you can handle that stress. So that all led to, I said, hey, I've got all these stories. I've got all these patients who've been complaining about stress. Let's compile them all into one book. 
we'll start and talk about philosophy of how your, your, your genes respond to the environment, your nervous system determines that response and the receiving and the processing of that information, how interference can affect that, and then environmental factors as well. Put it all into one book that hopefully makes a little bit of sense to people and it's not too technical and that was the stress-proof life. Yeah, no, look, it's a, and it's an important message. And I love the fact that you, you know, you've linked, you know, the resilience increase and, and in your book also to the chiropractic health, which is so important for our profession, for the message that we share. So, you know, in the book, you unlock the secrets of health, wealth, and happiness because they're all intertwined. As you said, you know, you increase the person's resilience, uh, their capacity to adapt and function. Well, obviously, the health improves. They're going to be, have a natural health and stronger immunity. But more than that, again, we have that capacity to feel better and, and function better. And that will link to their, their ability to, to take on more responsibility, to increase their commitment levels. And as you said, Joe, from you know, having a job to maybe employing three people, nine people, 100 people, and therefore their wealth increases. So actually our resilience and therefore the stress proofing our life instead of just trying to reduce the stresses, maximizes our performance capabilities and therefore the, the lives that we can leave. And so, you know, you're doing a great job sharing that message. And I think what's really exciting for me is one, in the book, you define stress. And so you've, you've got a message there. But more than that, you go in and explain the role of ner the nervous system in relation to stress and health. But then there's a chapter, and I love this chapter. I want you to talk about this because this is the chiropractic message. The chapter's called Get Adjusted. So talk to me about how you weave in chiropractic philosophy, the need for chiropractic adjustment in relation to the, the story of stress. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you look at the different models of subluxation, you've got the neurodystrophic model, you've got the uh, dyskinesia that leads to uh, arthritis and degenerative changes and so on. You've got disafferentation, right? So, and, and you know, we can get technical and go into all of this stuff, but ultimately, uh, every time there's a misalignment in our spine, there is a sympathetic response that's going to put our bodies more into fight or flight. Now, fight or flight, the minute the body, and there's different levels, right? You can be extreme, like when that bomb is falling over your head, you're in extreme fight or flight. But when you're in a low level fight or flight, you, your body's still doing those things. So two systems shut down every time we're in fight or flight. It's your immune system and it's your digestive system. So I see patients who come in and they complain about neck tightness or stiffness. And you do the history and you find out they also have chronic sinus infections, constipation, indigestion, cold hands, cold feet, dry eyes, dry mouth, dry skin. What is that? That's fight or flight. Because what happens in sympathetic overdrive, your pupils dilate, blood leaves your face, blood leaves your hands and feet. Your hands and feet are always going to be cold, right? Blood leaves your intestines, right? And poor memory, right? They're constantly forgetting things. Hey, I used to have great memory and I have bad memory. Why? Because the, the blood leaves the, the neocortex, goes to the primitive centers of your brain because you're either going to fight or run away, right? A misalignment in your spine does, that's been scientifically proven. There's research after research that says anything in our spine will cause that sympathetic response. So even if it's not, you know, the, the Merrick chart where, you know, you go, okay, this nerve goes to this organ. Yeah, valid. Research proven that. You look at the Windsor autopsies, absolutely, it is valid and it is true. But I can have a misalignment in my pelvis and it can cause me to have chronic sinus infections because there's also that sympathetic response putting me into uh, chronic stress. And unless I correct that, I'm not perceiving my environment properly and I'm not responding properly. Organs aren't working properly. So you'll see patients, you start to fix their subluxations and all of a sudden they go, hey, my sinus infection went away. I don't have allergies anymore. I don't have indigestion anymore. Well, because now you're, you're able to balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic, which is one of the reasons we do, we do the uh, heart rate variability test on the patients to show them that they're stuck in that sympathetic overdrive. Yeah, that's great. And again, the beautiful thing here is you're a chiropractor sharing the chiropractic story. You've written a book and linked the stress that people are experiencing, the health challenges that it is producing to a chiropractic solution. So tell me how you went about, you know, examining the experiences you're having in your practice with the patients and the challenges they're having. And you said, you know, you collected these stories and you wrote it, you know, you wrote it into a book. Tell me about that journey of writing the book and what really also what it's meant for you in practice having written that book. 
So, so I, I tell our patients, we have a vision for you. The vision is that you take care of your health. You'll never be one of those people out there walking around saying, I'm too old for this or I'm too old for that. You won't be one of those people saying, I'm too stressed to do this or that or something you really want to do, like have another child or, or raise a family or start a business or, or, or grow your career, move up the corporate ladder, that you'll never say those things are too stressful because you'll train just like a prize fighter will train to step into the ring and fight. You'll train for the stress and that training has to be mental, right? And physical and chemical, right? Or psychological and biochemical as well as physical. So our vision, we say, hey, you want to stick with us long enough. Here's what it's going to look like. And I think every chiropractor should do this is tell your patients, listen, first our goal, yeah, let's get you feeling better because you came in here because you're not feeling good. Let's get you feeling better. But the second stage, if you don't want to stop and keep going, now it gets interesting because let's not focus on making you stronger because the stronger you are, the more stress you can handle. Increase. I, I think resilience is a good word. But resilience just means, so, so I'll give you an analogy or, or an image. Let's say we have a styrofoam cup. We put this cup on a table and we start stacking books on top of it. Eventually, one of those books will cause that cup to collapse, right? So if we reinforce that cup, it's going to become stronger. It can handle more books, right? But the, book, the cup by itself will never get better. Humans are not like that. That's why I don't think resilience is the right word. Because when we're stressed, we actually get better we actually step into greatness. We actually respond by improving. Just like first grade was tough. Spelling words like cat, rat, and bat were difficult for us. Then we're in you know, fourth grade, fifth grade, we're spelling six letter words, eight letter words, uh, and it gets harder, but not for us because we've been growing through that process. So our goal with the patients is we'll help you feel better, then let's get you stronger, then let's work on longevity. Let's help you live longer. And lastly, and this is, you can only do this at the end, is make sure you always feel younger. So all of that set aside, the foundation is what I put in that book, Stress Proof Life. I have dyslexia. I have tremendous dyslexia. It is extremely difficult for me to read. So I wrote this whole book. And then I could not edit it because every time I sat there to try to read it, I couldn't read it. My eyes just jumbled the words around. So I had to hire someone to call me and read the phone, read my book to me over the phone. And I would listen and edit it. So it took six and a half years to finish this, this, this one book. And then, uh, you know, uh, it became what it is now. And, uh, it ended up, you know, I give it to every patient and I highly recommend another thing is I'd love to see every chiropractor write a book, Like you've written two, did you say two bestsellers? Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, not just to have a book, but to be a bestseller is, is a phenomenal status. And uh, I think it elevates chiropractic in a big way. And, and people love to take your book. I'm sure this happens to you. They take your book, they give it to other people and they say, this is my chiropractor. This is the book he wrote. And uh, hey, you got to see this and that. I think it's fantastic. Maybe we can encourage everybody to write a book. Yeah, look, that's absolutely what we're doing. These part of these interviews are really giving people the idea that chiropractors, and I work exclusively with chiropractors to help them write their books. Um, and that's what I'm, and, you know, these interviews are all about that giving, you know, practitioners the awareness that they can write a book, the knowledge that it's not so hard for them as compared to what they might think it is. Yeah, it might take years to do, but you can also do it quicker if you've got the right process. But what's really exciting about what you said just then is you give it to every patient. So it's become interwoven into your communication method. Um, how, how does it work when you give that to the patient? What, and you said, obviously, it elevates chiropractic. It also elevates the relationship. And what, what's the experience like when you give the book to your patient? How does that uh, you know, move them in the direction of the care, increase their understanding? So, so what happens in that dynamic? Well, you know, I, I, I typically do it right when I do that first adjustment. So once the patient has had their very, very first adjustment with us, I'll say, okay, I have a gift for you. And, uh, and then I take a book, I sign it to them, uh, you know, put their name, welcome to our chiropractic family with gratitude, Dr. Amir. And, and I hand it to them. And they, the first thing they do is, hey, you wrote this? 
And uh, so instantly credibility goes up. They say, wow, I look forward to reading it. And I say, well, that's, that's great. This is going to take you along your journey. Uh, everything we do will make more sense if you start reading this. Start with, start with page one. Just read a couple pages every day. It'll help you understand what we're doing for you. That's amazing. And, and you spoke about, obviously, you meet them where they're at with the symptoms and you lead them to you know, the vision you have for them for their health. Is that interwoven within the book as well? Are you pre-framing the experience, the, the client or patient journey and the direction you're moving within the, the pages of that book? Uh, to a degree. So, so, so the book talks about the, the three, and, and I'm going to call them coins. You know, every coin has two sides to it, you know. And if we can get patients to understand this, that things are three-dimensional, like we said, uh, uh, psychological, biochemical, and physical, if each of those were a coin, take the physical coin, for example, there's two sides to it. And it has to be balanced between the two sides. So one side would be exercise, but the back of the coin is rest. So you're exercising a lot, but you're not getting enough rest. You're not balanced and it's not going to work properly. And then you go to the biochemical, uh, one side of the coin is deficiency and, and you go, okay, these are the nutrients you're deficient in. But the other side of the coin is toxicity. You don't remove the toxins and feed the body good nutrition. You're still not balanced. You have to do both sides. The psychological. Where one side is, you know, hey, uh, eliminate all the negativity, ne negative people you're hanging out with, negative news you might be watching, but you should also feed your brain with positive, good things, things that make you feel good, things that make you excited, things that make you uh, thrive. Set goals that you, you not only would love to see those goals succeed, but you actually enjoy taking steps towards it. So every morning you're fired up, you're excited, you wake up and you say something really good is going to happen today. I just know it. Uh, so, so, so you take those three, and I think if we can get them to understand that, and then, and then none of it's going to work if your nervous system isn't balanced, right? So get, get your adjustments, get checked regularly, get your nerves checked, make sure they're functioning properly, and, and all of a sudden now, now you have the capacity to continue to grow. That's great. So it's a really powerful, profound educational tool that offers authority, uh, demonstrates your expertise, if you could say that there was a tangible impact of this book, what do you believe would be the most tangible, uh, obvious evidence of the effectiveness of a book within your practice? I think it emphasizes chiropractic as the main number one most important thing you can do. If there was nothing else you could do, this is something you absolutely have to do. So, you know, there's the thing called the simple seven that's, that's in chapter five that talks about, you know, uh, obviously sunlight and, and music and nutrition and exercise and sleep and breathing. Uh, but you, it tells them the body still has to process all of those things and you can't do it unless your nervous system is balanced. So, so I think the impact of the book would be that is that it, it brings it all together for them under the umbrella of the nervous system saying, balance that, make sure there's no uh, subluxations and then, then you can really thrive and grow. That's beautiful. And I think every chiropractor can, they already know what they know. They already have the story within them. They already have the expertise and they say this every day in practice. So it's just a, it's, it's that step from knowing to taking that knowledge, taking that genius and putting it onto a page and being able to deepen that message through that handing over a book to a patient and, and continue to deepen the chiropractic story and relationship the patient has with the practice and the chiropractor through that process. So I think that, that's incredibly valuable that you share that. And I just want to know what you're doing next because I know that this book has been an amazing, you know, it hasn't had that impact in your practice, but there's something else, isn't there? There's something coming now. I want to hear all about this too. Yeah. So, so, um, you know, while the first book, uh, was, was strictly written directly to my patients, um, I thought about set writing a second version of it. It has the same material, more updated, um, research. Uh, it's still all about chiropractic. This one is called tame your stress monkey. And, uh, and, and the, the idea is, you know, monkeys are really cute. Uh, they look like little humans. Uh, everybody would, would, would love to have a pet monkey. But you talk to anybody who's had a pet monkey, they'll tell you they, they tore up the walls, they, they broke the windows, they 
you know, defecated and urinated on everything. And, and the, they, they hit and hurt their owners. And I mean, it's just an awful, awful mess. You go, okay. But then there are some trained monkeys that are, um, that, that help paraplegics. These are people in wheelchairs. They can't move their hands. They can't move their feet. And the monkey will turn the pages of a book for them. The monkey will take the straw and move it into their mouth so they can get a drink. The monkey will flip light switches. The monkey will turn on the computer for them. The monkey will put a DVD into the DVD player and, and it knows how to do all these things. You go, well, what a huge contrast. Well, your ability to handle stress, and we call that the stress monkey, and, and specifically I'm referring to the fight or flight response when I call it the stress monkey, because everyone says, oh, cortisol is bad. Uh, the fight or flight response is bad. It's not bad. Everything in your body increases your chance of survival. Everything in your body helps you live better. Everything is good for you. Everything in your body, whatever your body produces is for your benefit. And so we can train that response to happen in a way that makes us better, brings us good things and enables us to step up. And, and now you can take on more stress. Now you can, hey, go open two more offices. You, know, you can hire five more associate doctors because you're like, hey, I can handle that stress now. It doesn't wear me out. It may be at the beginning, you have one associate and that one associate is just driving you crazy. And you're like, why did I ever do this? But then you go, oh, um, no, it's not affecting me. I can handle this. Let's, let's train. Let's work on this. Let's bring on more and, and grow. You know, it sounds easy, but it should be easy. But you got to train for it. Like I said, you got to train like you're stepping into the ring. You're, you're facing an opponent, and that opponent's bigger than you. And you go, how am I going to beat this opponent? You got to get stronger. And so this, this next book puts it, it's more for the lay population. It's from the general public, people who, aren't currently chiropractic patients, I think this this will resonate with them. But again, it's all about, there's two chapters on chiropractic in this one, and uh, and everything prior to that builds up to that. It, the, the subtitle is 10 Steps to Turn Your Biggest Stress into Your Greatest Strength. That's beautiful. So people that aren't in your practice, you get to share the message, and obviously it's a, it's a, it's a health-producing message, but more than that, it's an opportunity for people to know, you know, come to know about you, learn about you, build that, you know, know, like, and trust, then maybe connect with you. So in this way, by making it a more universal um, book and therefore it becomes a marketing tool in that regard, would you, would you say that's part of the reason behind this? Absolutely. And, and you know, I would love to, uh, you might have heard of, of uh, you know, there's an old book called Raving Fans. There's another book called Tribes by Seth Godin and, and so on. So, so I'd love to create this um chiropractic advocacy group in our in our area where there are people going and just advocating for chiropractic and the the drugless non-surgical way of it, empowering the body and and in the book i talk about how you, you look back uh to the 80s and in, in in the 80s they created this thing called the rice cake and they said it's fat Free, so you can eat as many rice cakes as you want, you know, uh, and people started putting butter on it. But that, <laughs> besides that, uh, everything went fat free. And, and we call that the fat free revolution, right? Because we said fat is bad for you. When did heart disease and obesity become a problem was when we took fat out of the diet, everybody ballooned up. And, and everybody got heart disease. So then in the 90s, like 1990, 1991, came out diet soda, no sugar, because guess what? It wasn't fat, we were wrong. It's sugar, get rid of all carbohydrates. Sugar is bad, right? And listen, I agree with that. I, and, and I'm not telling anybody to go eat sugar, right? So, so, but, but I know our audience is intelligent enough to know the difference, so I can talk like this. Uh, the minute the sugar came out of those sodas and everything went sugar free, diabetes quadrupled overnight. Cases of diabetes year after year quadrupled and then obesity got even worse. Now we still have the heart disease problem. We also have the uh, diabetes problem to deal with. So that was the sugar free revolution didn't lead to anything. And then now we're saying stress is the problem. Stress is causing all these things and we need to eliminate stress. And I can guarantee the minute you reduce stress, I'm talking to those guys who say practice is stressful, chiropractic is stressful, or 
it's hard to make money in chiropractic or patients won't listen to you or all that stuff. You're making this stuff up and you're blaming things that don't exist. See, you, you need to in, you, you need to look at it as a challenge, right? Why do people climb Mount Everest? They climb, do they do it so they get up there and put a picture or a flag or get, get their picture taken at the summit? Because you can freaking superimpose yourself on top of a mountain and act like you climbed the mountain. But when you go through the challenges of climbing that mountain and you, you risk your life, right? The altitude, the low oxygen, the cold temperature, you'll lose a toe and a finger, half your lungs will burn. I mean, it, it'll, your skin will dry and fall off your face and, and you'll still keep going and you'll get there and you'll be proud of yourself. You do it because the man, the woman who comes down that mountain is the different person than the person who climbed the mountain in the first place, right? So you chose the challenge, you chose chiropractic, you chose this incredible gift that, that heals and helps and, and empowers people. You chose this, now put it to good work. Don't be afraid of the challenge. Don't be afraid of the stress. Welcome the stress. Invite this and bring it on because this is gonna make me better. It's gonna make my practice better. It's gonna make my patients better. They deserve a doctor who knows how to handle stress. So I'm gonna take this on, I'm gonna step into it. I'm gonna build this incredible practice and I'm gonna teach others to do it too. Uh, you're a rock star, Dr. Amir. I love it. And you know what's super exciting about that? You're talking about really creating a revolution, starting a movement there. And so, you know, you're outreaching to community with a book, which is great. You've got a powerful message, which is incredible. And I believe every chiropractor loves their, you know, their, their profession. They love what they do. They know the impact it has. But it's one thing holding that in and then another thing and letting it explode out of you and, and have the impact that is that it, that it is capable of having. And so this idea of creating an advocacy group, you know, that, that, you know, masterminding with people to transform their lives, the health of their families and the community. You know, it begins with an idea. It's extended through this new book that you're going to you know, get published and it's going to be absolute bestseller. You're going to be able to continue to outreach into your community, serve, impact, and therefore fulfill, you know, your mission, your vision, your potential. And the reward, yes, it'll be financial. Yes, it'll be more at the growth of your practice. But I think the reward from all of this is what happens within the, the feelings that you get, the experiences you have. As you said, you climb that mountain, you come down a different person. That is the entire journey of doing all that you can within practice, all that you can through the knowledge, skills, and abilities you have. And I, I don't think anybody who listens to this cannot be moved by you know, the message you've, you, that you've just shared and the impact that searching who, searching yourself for who you are and the message you want to share and then getting that out into the world can have. So I don't think, I, I just think if there's any closing statements you've got for people, you know, about writing a book, about sharing a message, I'd love to hear that because I just don't want to dilute that last passage because it was so profound, so powerful. Anything else you've got to share before we close up? For, for sure. Yeah, just, uh, you know, Decide who you want to be and, and then realize it's not going to be easy. Plan for it and just, just approach it like the athlete who's, who's, who's going into that championship or wants to win that gold medal in the Olympics or whatever it is. And just go for, the, go for the top. Go for the best. Expect the best from yourself. Know that your body will respond. Train for it. Don't neglect your family. Listen, here, here's, here's the best part. Here's, and this is what, what that, that new book is all about, because I firm, a lot of people will say, um, what's, what's the use of being successful and wealthy if you do it at the risk of your health? And, and I, well, yeah, I agree with that. But I'm going to challenge you and say, what's the use of being super healthy if you have nothing? If you, if, you, if you sacrificed your career, your ambitions, and all the other stuff, all you did was become healthy. One is not good without the other. Both are equally important. And she goes, is it possible to have both? Guys, gals, 100%. That's the way it should be. You got to have both. You got to have health, wealth, and happiness. You got to have it all. Otherwise, it's not worth it. So go for the whole thing and believe you can get it. And I think that's the main thing. And that is such a pivotal important message i'm so grateful for your time great for you really appreciate you all that you do for chiropractic all you do for the the patients in your practice and your community and again i'm looking forward to this book coming out 
sharing that and uh, you know continue to be impacted by the wisdom and insight of your words and, and your and this becomes your legacy as well dr amir i appreciate your time i appreciate you thank you very much it was a pleasure thank you so much